What's up, everybody? You're listening to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name. And my name is Alex Worldwide Keller. And now you know Wrestling Cheers Worldwide. Taking your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows. Troubles are all the same You wanna go where everybody knows your name You wanna go where you can see that Troubles are all the same You wanna go where everybody knows your name And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers Where everybody knows your name Even if you are just a lonely old jobber this is Wrestling Cheers, where we talk about things going on in the Northeast Ohio independent wrestling scene. We preview shows, re- review shows, and sometimes we even have interviews. This is going to be an interview episode. We'll get to that in just a second. But, of course, we are brought to you by the Trending Topics Network and NEO Sports Insiders. Please go over to wherever you are listening to this fine podcast and rate, review, and subscribe. We are on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, and Podbean Wrestling Cheers. Dot podbean.com. You can get a hold of us on all your social media, especially if your social media is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook.com slash wrestling cheers, Twitter.com slash wrestling cheers, and Instagram.com slash wrestling cheers. Email if you so choose a desired wrestling cheers at gmail.com. We got a merch store over at whatamaneuver.net. Pick yourself up a wrestling cheers shirt or a fight Caden fight shirt, which those are still selling on the website. And all the proceeds, once again, go straight towards Caden's GoFundMe. So this is a special interview episode. It's not going to be as long as an episode as some people might want, but we will be talking with the thrift store jobber. This is actually a podcast that has been in the works to close to a year. I think it was sometime after Absolution last year. I was recording what was actually at that time just a video, but the audio did get recorded uh, or to get taken from the video and put onto the podcast. And it was just me talking about things going on with wrestling cheers that's when a lot of the feeds opened up where i i I restored the itunes feed i brought back the or i added the google play feed and i was was working on a bunch of things to help with the podcast growing and add add the demands because people were just going like well i don't i i I like the show but i don't want to have to go to the training topics network and subscribe to that feed and there's all these other shows i just don't really don't care about and have to download them so it was me just talking about a bunch of things. I had things going in my mind of what I wanted to do. And I mean, it's almost just a glimpse inside my mind when it comes to wrestling chairs or things I want to do, people I want to bring on. And I kind of mentioned on ha- about having Thrift Store Jobber on. And one of the biggest issues with doing a podcast for me is space and t- on top of actually all that time. And luck, oddly enough, or luckily enough for me that... The store jobber lives really close to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. I was going to have all my equipment with me for Jaylet Weekend, which you heard uh, so many episodes ago when we uh, at the cookout for the JT Lightning Invitational Tournament right before day two. The whole day two event, everything started, and this is this is in between that. Well, the Chandler Biggs Memorial Tag Team Tournament, and you'll hear me say it, and day two. So it, it's been a while of since a lot of this has happened, and. Did not get nearly enough time as I wanted. I figured maybe because they weren't having the Cabana podcast that there would be more time. No, I want to say that we had like about an hour from the Chandler Briggs Memorial Tag Team Tournament letting out to roughly when bell time was supposed to be for day two. So it was all about getting over there. And one of the biggest things about I've learned, especially about this live setup that I have is it takes way more time to set up and get everything I want correctly than it is to put away, which I think that's like everything. Uh, it takes l- probably at least f- I've noticed in my experiences, it takes longer to set up for like a, like Christmas decorations. than it is to take them on, put them away. Um, moving, I think might be the only thing that feels different. Cause I don't know whether that's takes longer or, or not, because it feels like it takes forever to pack things up and it takes forever to unpack everything. So I don't know. <laughs> so 
that's one thing we have going on here on Wrestling Cheers and, you know, a little bit of a programming note of what we have coming up. Uh, next week, we will be previewing the Drop Kick for Diabetes, which will be on July 22nd. More on that next week. I will be there and I will be live tweeting the results. And it seems to be a very good show. Uh, I'm having on Flying Ryan Burke, OCW wrestler, who's going to be at the show, going to be performing at the show, and the guy who's behind it, independent wrestler known as Kit Page, or his real name, I do refer to him as just because that's what he is on my phone, I have Kevin, and through both of them, we kind of talk about certain things, and I think even between when I sat down with Ryan and when I sat down with Kevin, which was a good month or so in between, that certain elements... And things change for the event, so that'll be something to be warned of before we get to that. And then after that, it's, it's going to be a special OCW episode where I'm going to be previewing the Buzzbin show that they have coming up. And also there's going to be an interview with 106.9, I guess you would say employee, but one half of the co-host of uh, the Stansberry show, not the title man himself, Dan Stansberry, but obviously Matt Fantone. So that's going to be a fun thing to share with everybody. The interview has been recorded and, you know, a guy who, you know, his job is talk radio. It's he sits down with me and we kind of do our own version of talk radio. And he's, he, he gets a little bit more freedom than he does on the radio. So the, I, I think he explored that a little bit, but not that much, but it, I, I wasn't pushing anything. I, I thought he was a great dude who I can have fun conversations with. And I mentioned this, I think, last week when I had Stacy on and we talked about uh, Nick and Dick's Excellent Adventure, about the review of that, is I'm working on questions for interviews, and this is when you're going to see them start coming out. You're going to hear my fave five, and that's what it's going to be, my fave five, dog. It, very much Booker T style, and we're going to go over six questions because Booker T always had more than five people in his fave five, and... In the Fantone one, I have my base down of what I want. You're going to hear another interview probably after Absolution that's not going to have as many because I recorded that even before the Fantone interview. And even now, I got way more, and it's something I'm working on. It's a little just side project type thing, or not even say side project, just a little thing I'm having fun with. So it's just something to be on the lookout for. And then after that, we got Absolution. I got a couple other episodes in the works. Got to figure out how we're doing the Absolution preview. Hey, if you want to be on the Absolution preview and you haven't already informed me, please let me know. As of right now, I think it's going to be two episodes. One way or another, I'm looking at two episodes. It's kind of what I have in mind. Two different panels. We're going to divide the card up and we're going to, each one is going to focus on a certain half, but how much how we wrap up every single episode, we're going to have the rest of the card being mentioned. We're going to do picks for everything. So you're going to get one giant pick board of people. And I don't know exactly how I want to do it. I'm thinking maybe have one panel with a bunch of new people that you haven't heard on the show before. Then the second panel or the other panel, whether which one I want to come first, is you have one of people who've been on the show for a while. Or I, I mix and match. So you have like some, some new people, no people on both panels. And like I said, go over the card as a whole. And it's something that luckily I have the next two episodes already. Like a lot of stuff recorded for it. I just have to record intros and outros. So I have a little bit of time, a little bit of breather, and I'll be able to concentrate on the Absolution episodes, and I'm really looking forward to those and Absolution as a whole and everything post-Absolution going on. We got WrestleRager 3, and of course, it it's, was announced officially after I recorded with Stacy that Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner, is going to be at Absolution, and I had heard wind of this. Much like also at WrestleRager 3, if you listen, the card is going to change. I kind of heard wind that Sabu was going to be on that show. So two things to look forward to on the next two AIW shows. I already got my Absolution ticket. And of course, the day after WrestleRager 3 is the old wrestling extravaganza, which is going to be so, so much fun. A lot of stuff going here for Wrestling Cheers, but, you know, I'm going to wrap this part up and let's get into the interview with thrift store jobber and then at the interview come back close out the show hey everyone this is jock samson and if you ain't listening to wrestling tears podcast you are a low down piece of shit and I, if you don't listen to it, i'm gonna come to your house and i'm gonna beat up your entire family and especially your grandmama listen or burn in hell 
All right, we are back here on the podcast. A very, very special episode. Uh, one that's been in the works for like close to a year, it seems like. I'm sitting down with the one and only thrift store jobber. Uh, hello, folks. Thanks for having me. Really? We just started recording? I know. I fucked Fuck up already. <laughs> and we're also joined by friend of the show, fan of the show, and someone who said earlier this year his dream was to be on Wrestling Cheers and then there was another podcast that you mentioned, too. That's right. So we have Patrick. I'm here. Let's talk some wrestling. <laughs> so we're like right now recording it in the middle of day two, the JT Lightning Invitational Tournament in between the Chandler Biggs Memorial Tournament, Tag Team Tournament, and like I said, jail at day two. No idea when this is even going out, so we don't really need to talk about all that right now, but oh, the cats are going crazy. You, what are you They're smell? really sniffing you up a little bit. I know. They're eat, they, I swear, like, they either smell my dog or they... Oh, whoa. They're very curious, and they also like to fight, so we might get some action while we're recording this. Yeah, they, uh, like I said, they smell my cat that we put down, like, earlier this month. One of the two things. And the funny thing is, is they they look, mine looks similar to both of them, kind of like that, that tiger type stripe. I don't know what kind of was. Tabby. Kind of like, a, yeah, kind of like a tabby, but it might be something, I don't know. I'm, They're I'm, both just shit cats. <laughs> I'm I'm more of a I'm personally more of a dog person, but yeah, we're I know we're getting a new one by the time this comes out. I already have it, but so so what's up, guys? Not a whole lot. It's been some good AIW shows so far. That's the thing I love about this weekend is just so much great wrestling, and then you just have like we had the cookout and everything right beforehand, which that episode should be released at some point uh, before this of just being there talking about things. So, I think the one main thing that we do need to address is uh, merch in general. That's something that, like, we, we were kind of having a conversation before, like, right before uh, the big Chandler Biggs World Tag Team Tournament about all the different kinds. Like, wow, like I don't know where exactly we could start. Just maybe uh, some of your favorite ones. Maybe either you found or, like, is there, do you have ones that you're trying to find? Maybe even for your personal collection or... Um, that's actually uh, it's a tough question to answer. I actually just completed. Um, so the first year I really started getting into wrestling and, and watched all the WWF pay per views was 1992. Okay. Um, from Albany, New York, uh, the Royal Rumble '92, obviously the best one ever. This is the first one I ever got to watch. Um, so that was like a grail for me and kind of one of the things that I uh, that got me collecting all these other shirts. And I actually just completed and I'm wearing it as we speak. Um, my 92 Survivor Series shirt. Um, so those were kind of sentimental value shirts for me, and I've got all those now. Um, so yeah, I don't really have anything on, on the list I'm looking for. Um, I just like unique shirts. Um, that's, I guess, the fun part of collecting um, old vintage stuff is you kind of never know what you're going to find. Um, yeah, there's plenty of real top dollar shirts that people are looking for these days, but uh, I just pick up anything that I think seems cool. Do you actually have a shirt from SummerSlam 92? Yeah. Or? Yeah, I got a 92 nice. shirt. Yeah, of course. That's awesome. That's one of the that's one of the few VHSs of WWE I had growing up. And it was I think we just we went to the Giant Eagle and they were like I was they sold VHSs that they were not, you know, renting anymore. And I remember I was SummerSlam 92 and I watched the shit out of that thing. Yeah, uh, I mean I, I I kind of have a similar story. I actually had a best of SummerSlam tape which had uh, just matches from all the pre-92 uh, Summer Slams, and I couldn't tell you how many times I watched that Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect uh, Intercontinental match from, was it 91, I think? I think it was 91, because he had two two great Intercontinental matches back-to-back. -back. It was Mr. Perfect and then Bulldog. Yep, yep. Yeah, so yeah, I guess it must have been 91, but yeah, I, I wore that tape out watching that thing. That and uh, the Mega Powers versus uh, Andre and, what was it, Ted DiBiase, where Miss Elizabeth pulls her skirt off, which... As an adult, I mean, I don't really know why that would have affected two adults back then, but uh, different times, I suppose. But obviously the podcast, but not the podcast, what I say that, uh, the product back then was very more for kids. So like it was, it was a shock and all thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I, get, I get it. But I mean, you know, growing up in the Attitude Era as well, it's looking back and watching that stuff. It's, well, uh, well, yeah, that, that aspect <laughs> of it too, it was like, oh man, that would, that would probably have done nothing back then. Yeah, for sure. 
I say oh. that all the time. <clears throat> I'll watch. I'll go back and watch the Attitude Era stuff, and I'm like, "How did my parents let me watch this?" <laughs> like, I know so many kids who weren't allowed to watch Raw and stuff on Mondays, like because it was too old, like you know, it was too risque or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I can look back at it now. Like, I'm. I don't think it's. I mean, granted, there were those parts, but God, it was so, kind of so bad at the same time. Oh, yeah. Like, there was like some like really bad cheese, and it's still there. Not, I mean, nowhere near the '80s and everything, but it was like. Why was, why was this still a thing? But it somehow it seemed to fit in into that era. I think it's why when you watch like clip shows and best ofs and all the documentaries they put out about the Attitude Era, like that, it captures obviously the best moments. And then when you try to go back and actually watch a lot of it, a lot of it is just awful. But I mean, you could say that about really a lot of the companies from the nineties. I think it it fit that time period. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what were some of the things we were talking about when it came to shirts? Because the whole thing behind, like, recently with Drake, like I was mentioned, how he he wore a all-over shirt. And, like, that's, like, one yeah, of those shirts so that... I'll, I guess I'll, I'll give you give the listeners a, a quick background to the shirt. So, um, in collecting a lot of the vintage merch from the 90s, uh, especially WWF stuff, um, and this actually goes for kind of all vintage shirt collecting. A lot of the stuff from the 90s, like the all-over print styles where you see, you know, a graphic that touches every single inch of a shirt um those seem to do really well uh if you're either a reseller or someone who's uh just looking to collect um they always catch a lot of a lot of money these days and one of the most popular ones for collectors is that 92 razor ramon shirt it's a yellow shirt it's got pretty much his whole face on the front of it um i'm sure if you've seen it you know exactly what it looks like right now um but for hip hop fans, Drake recently wore one in public, and that has skyrocketed the price of that thing. Uh, it's a shirt that generally would pull anywhere from 150 to 250 dollars uh, resale value, but now the last few weeks it's jumped up to 400 to 500 dollars, which is absolutely insane. Uh, I personally have never paid more than 100 dollars for a shirt, and even then, that's a lot. Um, but there's only probably less than a handful that I can say in my collection I've paid that much for. I kind of pride myself in finding shirts at a, at a cost that either I feel comfortable paying or if I'm going to flip it, I can make money on. So um, I would never ever pay $500 for a t-shirt. That yeah, that's crazy. Fucking that, insane. Yeah, that's, like, that's $500. And, uh, yeah, no way I would pay that much for a shirt. But that said, if I find one, I have no problem flipping it for that price. But, I mean, you know, money talks. <laughs> The sad thing is normally when people pay that kind of money for a shirt, it's been worn by a wrestler, but normally it's like a female wrestler. Yeah, you know, that's 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 a whole thing that my friends at the Virtual Pros podcast, uh, shout out to them. Which uh, I just started re- listening to recently. I think okay. I'm Good I'm about, I think I've listened to three episodes. I listened to Merchant Mania and then the past two recent episodes. Good. Well, then you've got a couple good ones. I mean, avoid the first couple. Um, they're a little <laughs> rough and I, even those guys will admit that, but all their back catalog you know check it out I, anyways um, i was gonna just say i always learned with podcasts sometimes just you just dive in don't go back just dive in it was because like merchant mania was like two episodes prior to the one that first started i was like all right this sounds i'm gonna inter- interested in what this is all about well plus two those guys unlike a lot of wrestling podcasts <laughs> chops um, in that bag over there and my cat is making <clears throat> making a, some noise with the bags small, here small. uh one little, yeah, one little brief mention about virtual pros before we move on um yeah they're not as topical as a lot of other wrestling podcasts so yeah, as a fan, you can kind of go back and listen to whatever and, and find something that'll interest you. But, um, anyways, talking about those guys and uh, I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? Uh, the I think we we're talking about the, the fee- how. Oh yeah, people- ring worn clothing. Yeah, that is one of the most shameful uh, actions you can do as a wrestling fan, and it's actually something that <laughs> when that topic first kind of hit the podcast and hit Twitter, um, I actually asked. Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae uh, on one of their last shows here in Cleveland. Uh, what's the more shameful thing to collect, uh, men's merch or women's merch? And uh, oddly enough, I think it was agreed that women's merch is a little more shameful to collect, just because yeah. just because guys' merch. I mean, there are certain items like and it's. I mean, it's kind of weird to collect like just trunks, especially if they're plain. But I mean, if like ring worn jackets or like boots or something, I guess that's a little more. 
wouldn't say it's common, but it's it's a little little less weird. But if you're if you're just buying women's panties and stuff, you know who knows what what's going on with those things. They're not just going in a in a case to be looked at like a lot of guys collecting stuff. So yeah, that overall is the most shameful thing to do as far as merch collecting goes. I I felt like if there was something remotely, a, you had some sort of attachment to like that toward a match or an event. Is one thing. Oh, of course. I mean, that but, that can be said about like, any merch piece, not yeah. just ring worn stuff. But I feel like with the women, maybe just I, I mean, I like women's wrestling, but I'm not that close. Like, if I could find, be able to go out there and buy Shawn Michaels uh, tights from WrestleMania 12, I'd buy it. Granted, uh, there'd be a lot of money. Yeah, of course. But that was my tenth birthday. And I love Shawn Michaels, so that meant a lot to me. But if someone was like, "Oh, like you want to pay this money for a, a random sable uh, outfit or something, or a shirt that you wear," I'd be like, "No, I'm I'm good. She's okay." Well, yeah. As you, as a non shameful wrestling fan, even though you wore a full on MAGA outfit with the Donald Trump <laughs> cape and everything at the show just just recently here, you know, even as a non shameful wrestling fan, you know, you you understand that it's kind of weird to buy shit like that. So. I mean, I, I wore that stuff to troll. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And when we go back, I'm changing. <laughs> I don't have I don't have the uh, flag right now, or the fanny pack, or the hat. Those were given to Jock Sampson. I'm sure he's gonna, gonna he's actually probably, wear them out pridefully. He's probably gonna be wearing them when we get back. Yeah, for sure. Probably. If if they have a match during night two, I wouldn't be surprised if he brings the flag out. But anyway, um, with those all over print shirts, like, are they that hard to find? Because that I mean, that's. When I first started becoming a fan, and I remember when I was in third grade, a kid walked in the first day of third grade with the all over print Bret Hart shirt, and I'm just like, that's awesome. Well, I think the big thing about them is, A, they pretty much were only made in one, maybe two sizes, so Mm -hmm. they're kind of a one-size-fits-all thing, so a lot of kids, especially back then, you know, either couldn't buy them because they wouldn't fit, or you know, bought them and didn't really wear them because, you know, they were so fucking huge. Um, so there's that. And also they were generally the most expensive shirts at that time. Um, if you look back at the old catalogs, they were anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks, which 20 to 30 bucks for a t-shirt, you know, 20 years ago, um, that could be like, you know, 40 to 50 bucks now, which not many people are paying for. Um, so yeah, that kind of adds to the scarcity of those things. And, uh, is definitely why they're more expensive. Um, you know, like I said, I, I'll pick them up when I can find them at a, a decent enough price. It's not something that's really my style. So I, I have one or two, but I don't ever wear them. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, anytime I grab one, uh, anybody, you know, there's always somebody willing to buy it almost immediately, which is nice. Cause I think Ed Baddis, he has, let's say he has the Oliver Shawn Michaels one. Oh yeah. Ed, 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 uh, has a lot of that crap. Um, anytime I post something from that era that he has, he'll always let me know he's got it, but he never wants to sell it to me. So like, thanks for the fucking info. <laughs> that's, that's Ed for you. <laughs> what do you think about some of the merch that, uh, wrestlers have? This is something also that we kind of talked about. Um, well, I mean the merch market now, um, it's kind of like, um, uh, similar to a touring band where, uh, especially for younger wrestlers, um, you know, having merchandise is a way to make extra income. You know, if you're a guy that's just starting out or, um, is only kind of just starting to make your name for yourself, you're probably not going to get much from a promoter for your matches. So if you have a table full of merch, you know, obviously you can make your gas money back or, you know, just make actual money. <clears throat> that said, um, there are a lot of wrestlers, and it's not that difficult to figure out how to make it work, but uh, a lot of wrestlers do the lazy thing, which is, you know, uh, set up a Pro Wrestling Tees account. Um, they don't have to print any of their own stuff. They don't have to ship any of it. Um, they can have 16 different designs, um, and if somebody wants to buy one, they can, but uh, there's no overhead cost, which um, I get that. Uh, you know, it's not cheap to print out uh, 200 shirts at a time. Um, that said... If you have the money and you have the time and you know how to ship stuff out, um, you can make a whole lot more money and have better uh, fan interaction that way. Um, you know, Not that I ever purchased from them, but I know anybody that orders from Pro Wrestling Tees, it's two to four weeks to you know get your order. Generally, the shirt quality isn't that great because they uh, use a process called directed garment printing. Uh, more or less, it's you know, printing out a logo on a, you know, high-end laser printer and ironing on a shirt, which, uh, 
is a fairly common thing. It's been around, you know, as long as there's been, you know, graphic t-shirts, but uh, anybody that's bought something from Pro Wrestling Tees can tell you that the stuff falls apart and it looks like shit. Um, whereas if you get an actual screen printed or discharge printed shirt um, with high quality ink on a nice t-shirt. Um, not only are you going to come out with a better product, but you're going to make more money in the end. Um, you know, from talking with different wrestlers, you know, I know they'll get anywhere from three bucks to maybe eight or nine bucks per shirt sold with pro wrestling tees. Whereas if you're putting that money up front and getting a batch of shirts done yourself, depending on what your shirt costs, you know, your profit can be anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks. That said, it's a little more work, but um, you know, if, if you're going that hard with training and traveling and, and kind of trying to make it in the wrestling world, you know, you want to put that money into, you want to put that same effort into doing merch because, you know, especially when you're younger, that's a great way to make extra income. And it's one of those things I have talked to, um, some of the AIW wrestlers about, you know, some of the guys that I've kind of come to know from going to shows the last few years and help them kind of you know, guide them in different directions than just going the pro wrestling tees route. Because again, I can understand why you would do that, but if you put the little extra effort in, you can, you know, make a whole lot more money and, and not only that, but make better quality merch, which as a merch collector means a lot to me. I think it, it, it makes sense for some people to at least have that store up for like, hey, if you, you like seeing me on TV, you like seeing me on this and that go there and you can have the ship to you don't have to see me in person oh, of course i mean gregory iron actually is probably a great example of that because he's one of the first guys from aiw that i really connected with about you know merch collecting and and um you know also putting out merch as a wrestler and he does that very well um he always has a couple designs which he has you know quality screen printed uh shirts but at the same time he's got his store um, and there's some stuff that he'll just put out for a very short period of time, like say for, uh, some sort of charity thing he's working on. That's happened more than once. Yeah. I totally get that. Um, cause you know, if it's a, kind of a funky design, that's probably not going to sell that well. Um, and again, you want to just do something real short term for a benefit, you know, you're going to save money that way and just, you know, get a few teas sold that way. But, uh, especially stuff to bring to shows, spend the extra money and it, it looks better in person too. Like if you're a fan checking all these merch stands out and you um you know say you only got 20 bucks that night and you there's two or three different guys that you would be willing to buy merch from you know as a fan i'd want to pick the merch that's the best quality and if i see two of the guys have you know direct garment shirts and somebody else has a nice quality screen printed one i'm giving them the 20 bucks every time is there any like designs right now that we've seen maybe somewhat locally and doesn't have to always be like AIW or anything? Do you think that like, there's any like really kind of bad designs that like uh, maybe that, that that stick out? Because everybody's gonna have hit and miss, I think, or maybe one that might speak to you but not the next person. I won't call anybody out specifically because um, you know a lot of these guys have kind of become friendly with. Yeah, and I don't want to piss anybody fine. off. I, I would say to shit on anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, I would say one of the th probably my least favorite um, genre of merch would be uh, like collaboration stuff or stuff that's influenced by pop culture. Say if uh, somebody repurposes a, a cartoon logo and makes it out to be a shirt about them, or you know says say they do a metallica ripoff shirt and they just change their name um that shit's kind of played out and anybody can do it and you know it's one of those things where you know as a as a, if you're an idiot fan and you see oh you know a misfits logo that looks like fucking you know sabu's fucking face or something i don't know um i get why you'd want that but it's also really cheesy and lame and, and easy to do anybody can do that um I think uh, the best merch is stuff that's really thought out and planned. Um, and some wrestlers do that. A lot of them don't. Um, but again, when you have, like say, if you have a bunch of fans sending you artwork and you can, again, send that artwork to Pro Wrestling Tees and spend zero dollars and have a t-shirt design, you know, why not, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that aspect. But there's some like, I love the, what I, I mean, kind of like, like basically parody shirts. Cause like kind of what you're saying. Yeah. There's some that I feel like it's like, oh, I'm a like I'm a fan of this, and they're doing this logo. Like, I mean, for example, like yeah, wrestling chairs. I did a Bullet Club one, cause I was like, yeah, I'm a couple years behind it, but I'm like, you know what? I kind of want that logo, and eventually it's gonna be put on a shirt. Will a lot of people buy it? Maybe, but I also made sure I had one. And that's one thing that sucks. Our original logo is a 
parody logo on its own. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it kind of at least has a theme to it. It's not yeah. just taking one thing from pop culture and turning it into, uh, you know, a design that matches what you're all about. Yeah. Um, I will say there's the only, the one company that uh, I first noticed doing these when I really got into merch collecting a few years ago. Um, there's a company called Big Boot Leg Drop that they do a lot of uh, music based references. Um, you know, mash them up with wrestling shirts. Like they did. Um, one I have personally, it's a Gorilla Monsoon T-shirt that's influenced by the New York hardcore band Gorilla Biscuits. Um, it's a perfect, ma- you know, mashup and, and really just works well. They also did a really cool one um, with Shawn Michaels and Typo Negative, which mm. if you can get that connection, both Shawn Michaels and Peter Steele from Typo Negative both posed for Playboy or Playgirl. Playgirl um, yeah. So <laughs> to have that collaboration and know. You know, know the backstory behind that. You know, the the average person isn't going to get that, but you know, if you have that knowledge, it's it's kind of a kind of a cool design. But I need to see that because I'm a fan of both. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you after this. A fan of you're a fan of Playgirl. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> no. Uh, you yeah. know what centerfold he's talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Typo negative and Shawn Michaels, two of my two of my favorites. I think somebody made a Seinfeld uh, shirt like that, like a 90s hardcore shirt, but it's all the people from Seinfeld. It looks like that Gorilla Monsoon, Gorilla Biscuits one. It's like real similar. I mean, I would believe that. Um, That's kind of almost in the same vein of the 6 million Black Flag Bars t-shirts, which is another thing that's, you know, I've seen once in a while in wrestling, and thankfully not too many people have done that, but uh, I saw one today, (laughs) multiple people wearing it. If you really? Think, who's, who's if you wrestling? think hard enough, oh, they weren't wrestling. They were doing something else in the building. But I mean, like, what? What? Should oh, I... yeah, that is true. Oh well, uh, Ed, you know, <laughs> Ed, Ed can wear what he wants. I, I'll, I'll, I won't make fun of him too much. No, that wasn't who I was talking. <laughs> was it Ed? No. I thought it was Ed. No. Oh, never mind. Yeah, he's Sorry. got it now. Yeah, now he's doing it the right way. Are you talking about Gary from Smart Mark Video? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gary, right. I, I, well, I, you well know, Smart Mark not, Video, they have... Not that yeah, I... The Smart Mark logo with the four VHS yeah, not, tapes. I'll give Gary a pass because I'm almost... Not that I know Gary personally, but I feel like he probably can't know who Black Flag is. <laughs> yeah, that, that can't be. I think it's he's just wearing a Smart Mark Video shirt and everything. Yeah, like. so he's, he's just telling the company line. That's fine. I'll, I'll give him a yeah. pass. It's just funny because you, you brought it up and I was like, we just, just saw somebody wearing one of those. <laughs> Well, at this point, I just see so many of them that kind of block them out or, you know, just pretend they're not even there. It sucks that this is going to have to be so short because with a 730 bell time and we have like... Yeah, we got to get back. To the yeah, 22 show. minutes, but there's one thing that I want to touch on and give you like open air mm-hmm. about this. What is your issue with the Duke? Oh, oh man! Because you I see said, you, I, we got a short episode. Then you ask him that question. That's like <laughs> I should, maybe well, I should have said. Hold on, it's because I see you on Twitter and say this week you're like it's it shoot heat. Well, I mean, I was told that uh, the Duke doesn't like me uh, as a fan, um, which is fine because I think he's a piece of shit. Anyways, um, so my story with the Duke, uh, you know, uh, obviously uh, I like to play the role of a good wrestling fan and, you know, cheer the cheer the faces and boo the heels, as they say. And the Duke always has been um, a pretty well-known heel in AIW. That said, I mean, had a few fairly normal interactions with him at the bar after shows and things like that so never really had anything personal against him so much um but his presence on twitter is pretty laughable uh at times and really trying to get some nuggets super cringeworthy and um you know I, i won't get too into his political beliefs but let's just say i don't really agree with him even though he's the type of person that you can point out something he said and he'll you know, spin your words back at you like he doesn't mean what he actually means. So, um, I was about to say, have you ever seen him on Facebook? Uh, I don't, no, I don't, I don't want to see him on Facebook. I can't imagine it's any better than this fucking. Because I'm not saying you necessarily have to be friends with him. It's more or less, I've seen him jump into other people's conversations, and it's like long and drawn out. And oh like, yeah, it, it, and I'm just like Jesus, man. That's kind of like wrestling. Um, I don't like to take social media too seriously. Like, there's plenty of people that take both wrestling and social media super seriously, and you know. Uh, I have a business that's based on social media, and I take that serious to a certain point, but I also like to poke fun at myself and poke fun at the collectors and all that stuff. Um, same thing with wrestling. Like, I don't take wrestling seriously. Um, you know, I love it. 
It's one of my favorite things. Um, I love going to shows. I love yelling and cheering people and just getting all that energy out. And it's a great time when, you know, you're surrounded by people doing the same thing. But when people complain about wrestling or just get mad about certain things, like, you you know, you're not, you're, you're just not being a, a good fan, I guess. You know, you're not, you're not, you know, I get being passionate about something, but yeah. to the point where it upsets you, like, you're just, you're going too far. Yeah, there's, I know there's fans out there that hate, like, a lot of stuff that, like, I'm not going to say a lot of stuff AEW does, but they'll, like, go on social media and just bitch. And I'm like, w- why do you come then? Yeah, I, I, I would never, you know, you know, I, I've been a fan of AEW for about four years now, and yeah, there's definitely some things that, you know, probably as a fan, I'd, I'd like to be different, but at the same time, um, you know, I don't, I, I'd, I'd rather not be negative. I'd rather just... Uh, like the things I like and cheer for the things I cheer for and you know occasionally if I can say something in a way that's you know uh, constructive criticism in a way that actually makes sense you know maybe I'll say something but I'm not going to bitch I'm not going to complain I'm not going to shit talk anything um, with the Duke however he is very <laughs> easy to shit talk and very easy to make fun of um, but like I said the social media stuff it's just super laughable and uh, you know to me, it's not him being... It's not his character. It's not his wrestling gimmick or whatever, you know, quote-unquote. Not to use terminology, but uh, it's just him as a person, and, like, that... I just think he kind of sucks. Well, there was um, that so, whole incident with the fan that said... Used a, a word that people aren't fi- a big fan of. Yeah. Uh, he used the F the word, page. not the fuck He word. did that to us... The week prior to that incident, the Duke said that in the ring to me and Brian. Yeah. Which, again, I mean, I get it. You're trying to be a heel, you know, quote unquote. But like he was, he, you could tell he was visibly pissed. Like this dude was pissed and was like, you F and F. Yeah. We were like, whoa, dude. I mean, I was told and I knew it's it's tax season. I know, you know, six figures, three inches, zero nuggets. Duke is uh, (laughs) gets very busy this time of year and gets stressed out um but yeah i i i'm i'm sure he was reprimanded properly for saying something like that because you know uh as all the press aw got for the fan incident um you know if if the duke got that same amount of attention it wouldn't be a good thing for anybody so uh no you know it is what it is that's why i think he's a piece of shit (laughs) yeah and because he's bald (laughs) Where, oh, I'm not going bald, but I mean, uh, plenty of people are going, Welf's going it's just, bald. It's just well. low-hanging fruit. I had to, <laughs> to talk a little shit. I'm sure he hates me just as much as you. Yeah. Probably not as much as you. He fucking really hates you, dude. I mean, I say a lot of really mean things, and I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, you know, hey, it's, it's me booing the heels. <laughs> you know? If you don't like me for real, that's even funnier. But, uh, I don't know. I get a kick out of it. Fuck the Duke. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up on that just because, like, we are getting really close and we have to pack. I have to, well, at least I have to pack this shit up and I got to change and get the fuck out of here. So, uh, any final thoughts or last minute plugs that you want to throw out? Um, well, thanks for everybody that already follows me on Instagram. Um, you know, it's it's definitely been a little uh, interesting getting known at AAW shows for being the guy that sponsors the podcast and does t shirts and stuff, but. I made a lot of friends and and I have a great time at AIW. So uh, even though it's kind of awkward for me at times, it's it's you got the French Lawler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Tom uh-huh. gave me a nice smooch last night on, on his way to the ring. Uh, you know, as he made it at successfully out of the first round. So I mean, I got that going for me. I'm. I mean, before you were known as that, you were just the Davy Vega lookalike. Yeah, which I, I guess I mean, as a slightly chubby white guy with long hair and a beard. And glasses. And glasses. Yeah, I guess Davey Vega. But I look like a lot of fan, a lot of guys like that. There's yeah. plenty of us out there. But I think it was like right at the time he stopped showing up as much. Like, well, like you start getting... At least I started looking like, oh my God, that's Davey Vega. <laughs> and there's like tweets out there because I think I searched one time Davey Vega and pit through pictures or something. I found someone thought you were Davey Vega in another picture. Yes, yes. And I think I tagged you in the picture because I, yeah. I quote tweeted it. I thought that was fucking hilarious. Like, okay, I'm not the only one. <laughs> And then to find out, I was, they were like, oh, that's the store job. But actually, I just talked to someone recently. They were like, yeah, that one fan that really hates the Duke. And I'm like, yeah, that's the store job. That is? Yeah, man. That's. I was surprised, too. But yeah, that's. And I even said, I'm like, the dude looks like David Vega. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess I'm 
sort of known, I suppose. That's that's weird to even think about. But like I said, it's it's cool anytime anybody says hello to me or whatever. So that's sweet. But uh, I guess we'll get to the plugs now. Um, my Instagram, which is my most popular form of social media, it's just at thrift store jobber. Um, those are my eBay and Etsy handles where um, you can find a lot of wrestling merchandise, uh, old stuff. Uh, I have some new stuff like the Chris Benoit pins and the Luna Vachon um, t-shirts and, you know, Papa Shango posters. I have a couple new shirt designs coming out in the next few months. Um, you'll be able to find that stuff on all, you know, sales outlets. Uh, my Twitter is TS Jobber. I've been handling the Rye Cap, which is... Uh, <laughs> The recap of the Ryback podcast, which is definitely one of the most enthralling wrestling podcasts out there. Um, so you can check that out usually Mondays or Tuesdays whenever Ryback gets around to putting out the show. Um, and then my new merch site is big uh, thriftstorejobber.bigcartel.com. Uh, like I said, it's got all of the posters, Luna shirts, and pins, so you can find all that stuff there. Um, so yeah, like I said, thanks for following me, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, are you gonna sh- you're not going to shout out Butteritas, dude? This whole oh, yeah, episode I mean, has happened. I can't believe there's not been yeah, one mention been, of that if, Rita. If you've been hearing any of the sipping or, uh, you know, glass Clinging. clinking, that yeah. would be my uh, drink of choice. Tonight I've got a grape Rita. Um, you know, only one tonight because I've been pacing myself. You know, three shows in two days. Can't go full throttle all the time. Got to just slowly kind of sip it. So, um, <laughs> But, yeah, this is what gets me hyped and gets me screaming at the Duke and the goddamn <laughs> lunatic in the front row. So, uh, you know, shout out to Rita's. You throwing any uh, plugs out there, too? Uh, yeah, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, at you can call me Ron. My name's not really Ron, but that's fine. Ooh, Chopper just got him. <laughs> and my cat just nipped Justin here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. He, he doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> He's like sitting right behind your head too. It's yeah. funny. Well, I was like petting, and then all of a sudden, it was like one of those things. Like I know some cats are just like pet. You're petting, petting, Got petting. And like, close. Stop. Just letting you know he's there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I guess. Uh, thanks for coming on, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. All right, baby. This is old master right here, king of big dog style, master of the pop up headbutt, king of the trailer court, the Sutter Psycho, right here. Y'all listen to wrestling chairs. You dummy if you ain't paying attention. Listen, subscribe, like, share, all that business, baby. I'll mess around right now. I'm going to drink some live bears. All right. That will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers. But before we go, we got, you know, regular things to talk about. We have to remind you that if you want to find us on social media, hit us up facebook.com slash wrestling cheers, twitter.com slash wrestling cheers, and instagram.com slash wrestling cheers. Email if you so choose to desire wrestling cheers at gmail.com. We have the What a Maneuver Store. Get yourself some official wrestling cheers logo stuff or some fight king fight stuff. And of course, rate, review, and subscribe. It is very much appreciated, very much helping. And like I've mentioned before, if you go on to, as of right now, it's going to, I'm going to stick with iTunes. And if you go to iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe, obviously. But if you review us and send us a screenshot, uh, DM it, or you can just tweet it, it uh, whichever is better for you. So we know which one is yours. Working on a special prize, and it's something that I don't want to say just yet, but as of right now, it's ongoing, and I might say for right now, it's going to be in good faith, just do it now, because I might make a deadline and not before I announce what it is, so the winner could get truly surprised. So be on the lookout for that right now. You still got time, but if you get it in now, at least you know it's done and you, and you won't forget. So go over to Apple Podcast, iTunes, whatever you want to call it, rate, review, and subscribe, please. But you can also go over to Google Play, Stitcher, tune in, YouTube, Spotify, and Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. Check out all of our friends over at the Trending Topics Network, such as All Beer Inside, Loot Chat, Eurovision Showcase, and Chill and the 450 Podcast. We also have podcast friends such as the Chris Clems Cavs Cast, Let the Hate Flow Through You with Jeremy Shear and El Hardano Diablo, Pod Van Dam, Adults, Benefits of Podcasts, Center Stage, S-E-N-T-A-R, Stage, Super Fantastic Podcast, Road Home from Wrestling, Kick Out a Two, The Indie Cast, and Marks with Mikes. And we got our other non-podcast friends such as the man you heard on this show, Thrift Store Jobber, Rebel Life Media, Set Tab Photo, Ringside Shots Photography, NEO Sports Deciders, and the official graphic designer of Wrestling Cheers, Moy Boy Designs. That will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name. Well, even if you do 
Use direct to garment for your shirts later. Making your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Would you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go away. Yeah. You're yeah. the one where everybody else is. Yeah.